everyone. My name is John Haddad, biomechanical specialist, and I will not be your speaker tonight. So why am I up here? We've all heard inspirational stories and motivational stories about people who went from being nothing to being something huge in the field that they have conquered. They all tell you to take control of your life and that if you push and you work for it, you can be whatever you want to be. Jack Ma is a story of a businessman that went from being rejected from several jobs to being China's richest person and owner of Alibaba, the famous online reseller. Walt Disney rejected 302 times from being funded from the world famous Disney World. He never gave up, he never stopped trying until he finally got what he worked hard for. Even in sports, many were told they wouldn't make it to the big leagues. They would never go pro. Lionel Messi was born with growth hormone deficiency, proved the whole world wrong. Matthias Steiner acquired type 1 diabetes at the age of 18. His own national team bet that he wouldn't make it, he would fail. He also proved the whole world wrong and went to become an Olympic gold medalist. That man over there, that's me. I'm a living example of how weight loss and nutrition can also inspire people. Along my journey, I've also inspired many, many people. I brought you my pants so you guys can see a perspective of what that really is. There was a day in my life that these pants didn't fit me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Thank you, thank you. But in our field, these inspirational stories don't seem to exist. What seems to shape these stories are age and genetics. Oh, my mom used to have knee pain, so it's okay for me to have knee pain. Oh, my uh, father used to have back pain, so it's okay to have back pain. We seem to find pain, we seem to find comfort that one of our family members had these kind of problems. Oh, you have back pain, how old are you? 30 something, that's normal. Then 40, knee pain. Then 50, shoulder pain. And the vicious circle goes on and on and on and on. We are here to show you that there is a way. When my colleague Kareem and I were presented with this amazing opportunity to do the TEDx talk, we started talking between one another and debating who would actually do the talk. And since our talk falls under the larger title of pain and biomechanics, we decided that the person with the more scientific German accent do the talk. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the talk. Hello. Hello, my name is Karim Mahmoud. Ich freue mich heute hier zu sein. Don't worry, I won't speak German. Don't worry, don't worry. To be able to follow my talk today, um, you obviously don't need to speak German and you don't need to know a lot about biomechanics. You don't need to be a scientist or a doctor to follow my talk today. All I want you to use is common sense. So whatever question I'm going to ask, I want you to ask them for yourself by using just common sense. So like John mentioned, in our field of pain and biomechanics, we have this thought that our uh, cartilage is going to wear out and our structure is going to wear out the older we get. So you would think it's like a, a tire of a car. The more you use it, the more it gets worn out. So if I drive 300 kilometers, the cars are not going to wear out as much as if I do 30,000 kilometers with it. So that seems to make sense if we use common sense. But today we're going to prove, or we try to prove to you, that it's a little bit different with humans. There were two basic questions I had when we thought about this topic. First one is unilateral differences. People came into my practice and they told me, ah, Kareem, when I go hiking and running, always my left knee hurts. It's never the right one, it's always the left. So I was thinking to myself, maybe they jog like this. But to my surprise, obviously they didn't. They took one step after the other, but by a miracle, it's only the left knee that hurt them, not the right one. Second question, pressure differences. So I'm standing here in front of you today. My ankles are at the bottom, my knees are on top of it, 
and my hips are here. So the ankle has the most pressure, right? It should wear out the most. So please, just give me a short hand sign. Let's see how it is in Lebanon. How many people of you heard about hip atrosis or hip re re replacements? Give me a hand sign. Oh, that's quite a few. How many people heard of knee atrosis or knee replacements? How many of you heard of ankle atrosis or ankle replacements? Oh, it's the same as in Germany. So that made me think. So here's a little example. Rose, she's 78 years old. She came to my practice. She had a crazy knee valgus. So she almost hit her knees when she was walking. And she suffered from stage four atrosis, which basically means there is no more cartilage on the bone. So it's just bone on bone. She came to me and she had pain on her left knee. Only on her left knee. And as a matter of fact, her legs are twins. They came out of the mother's womb at the same day. Incredible, huh? Twins. But she only had pain on her left knee. So she came to me and she was open for a suggestion to try to improve it because for a person with her age and condition, there's only one, only one possible treatment. That's a knee replacement, but she didn't want to do it. So we started working on the biomechanics, started to reprogram her muscles. So very simple, we have an ax. So we tried to make it straight again by using the right muscles, so it worked. She ended up being pain-free, and as a matter of fact, she went to the, go see the Indian summer in Canada for two weeks hiking without having any pain. So, thank you very much. <laughs> so, um, there gotta be other factors than age. So that's why we talk about biomechanics today and not age. To me, age is like gray hair. It only tells you that the person you have there is not a teenager anymore. It doesn't tell you about the state he's in, how healthy he is. Actually, I don't know if you realize, John's beard is much grayer than mine. I'm younger than him. So, and we even had more questions when it came to the function of muscles. You know, because if I'm standing here in front of you, I have the pec muscle here. We all know the pec muscle. Us guys, we like to bench press and butterfly. So um, I was thinking about the function of this muscle for the longest time, because if I do this movement, what does that apply for in everyday life? I found one applicable uh, scenery is when I'm in school and I'm a bully. I like to push other people around. So is it a bully muscle? Other than that, I couldn't find the benefit of having a good function in this one. Because if I push a car, I leave my hands straight and I push with my legs. I'm not pushing a car like this. So what is, what is, what is this muscle here for? So we were at the gym and we were thinking for the longest time, what does this muscle do? So we were thinking about, let's reprogram it. So instead of having the body as a fixed point and my arms moving, that's how we change it. So we have the arm as a fixed point and we start using the same muscle, and to our surprise, we realized that we started rotating. So the rotation of, of the upper body, is that applicable for life? Yes. When we run, we rotate. When we throw a ball, we rotate. When we play tennis, we rotate. When we slap somebody, we rotate. So please, next time you slap somebody, do it biomechanically correct. So, it's um, very important to program functions than just training muscles, okay? If you give a certain motion, a proper uh, following, and you train the certain muscle, for example, like slapping somebody, you will automatically use the muscles in the right fashion. They will activate in the right context, okay? Why is that? Because our body consists of 40 billion cells, so it needs structure. And it's structured like a company. The CEO is the brain. Our muscles are the workers. So the CEO tells the workers what to do. If the CEO gives the wrong, intro, uh, wrong like, uh, task for the workers, the company is not going to work well. Okay? If I want to change that company because it's not working well, who am I talking to? I'm talking to the CEO try to restructure the company. I'm not going to every worker and they're like, hey you, work harder, we need to sell more phones. And oh, you over there, work harder, and you over there. No, we start from the bottom down. And this is very important, we need to start programming, okay? So 
in our field, it's like uh, we don't like to do that too much. Many, many rehab systems, they are uh, just looking for training muscles. Okay? So what does actually happen when I have a CEO that tells the wrong function? Think of this motion again. If I do this all the time and I get strong at it, my posture is going to change. My shoulders go forward, my neck is here, and this is for us the leading cause for having shoulder and neck pain. Okay, we all know this. So you see my posture, I'm very kyphotic. So what does it mean? I did too many bench presses or I was the most feared bully in school. I'll leave the answer for you guys to answer. Okay? So going back to Rose, why did she have only one side that hurt her? Because if your biomechanics are wrong, you have a twisted pelvis. One side is higher, one side is lower. You have a valgus, you have duck feet. This is going to change the mechanics of your joint and therefore the cartilage wears out more. Not just by age and genetics. So it's like having a car. Yeah, a Porsche is a very nice, fast car with the best and highest standards of engineering. But if I go off-road, it's useless. Okay. So when we had this amazing opportunity of speaking here at this event, the TEDx uh, guys, they came and they talked to us. So they asked us this question. So why you guys actually do what you do? And first we were like, of course, I know. But then we started thinking, huh, why do we actually do what we do? And as we heard um, John telling us the stories of millions of people get inspired by these incredible stories of these great people, John and I, we get inspired by those small stories. The story of Rose fulfilling her dream to go see the Indian summer. She thought she's never going to do it because she can't hike. It's the people that come to our practice and they tell us, uh, I could lift my kid up, throw it in the air. We had a lot of fun. I could be able to play soccer with my son, throw ball with my daughter. And uh, these things are closely related to pain. Because if I have pain, I, I feel scared. If I'm pain free, I'm not scared. So I can maybe just bow down and play with my kid. Enjoy the moment without being all the time, Ooh, how do I get up again? Uh, uh, hopefully nobody's gonna see me. So being in the moment is all about having no pain to worry about. But, but today we get told that uh, you age, you wear out, that's it. You can't do nothing about it. So you lose your self-responsibility. And I believe that losing self-responsibility is very dangerous because it makes you rely on external factors like surgery, medication, crutches. And we have all these people, the gurus, like I mentioned before, they tell us, you can do it. Don't blame others. Don't make excuses. So we, sh we shouldn't just leave these thoughts in the field of business and sports. We would love to see more of these thoughts in the field of health, especially in our field the biomechanics, okay? So for all the people in here, especially the younger people, in case you don't know who I'm talking to, the people with no gray hair, the seeds of behavior that you plant now will determine the fruits of your health in the future. So if you, if you become aware of your actions now, your future self will thank you. And now please, John, my gray old friend, come on stage. Habibi, and the fan, yalla. No mic. Even though John said, uh, I have a scientific accent, I'd like to finish my talk with the words of a German philosopher, Arthur Schopenhauer, who said, health is not everything, but without health, everything is nothing. Dankeschön, Schokolade.